Oh, listen, my son, my son, he he stopped breathing. He got four years here, yeah? and I and we wake up and he stop he stop he stop breathing. He sent me. Okay, what's he do? What's he doing now? Is he breathing? <laughs> no, he's not breathing. Okay. Nothing. All right, are you are you right by him at the moment? <laughs> Please. Now listen, are you right by him at the moment? <laughs> yes, we Okay. So he, he's definitely not breathing. <laughs> she, she stop breathing, please. Send okay, me. listen, listen to me, okay? Yeah. I need I need you to listen to me. I'm gonna tell you what to do for him, okay? Yeah. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, are you are you right by him now? Yes. Okay, just put your ear to his mouth and tell me, can you feel or hear any breathing? No, nothing. Okay. Don't move now. All right. Okay. Okay. And you're right by him now. Yes. Okay. You need to lay him on his back. Okay. On a hard surface. Lay him on the floor. He's gonna box. Yeah. Okay. And now I need you to kneel by his side. Yeah. Okay. And using your one hand, you need to play, place your hand in the centre of his chest. Something coming from mouth, please. Okay. Listen. 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 Listen to me, okay? I'm going to tell you what to do to help him, okay? Yeah. So I need you to listen to me and do exactly what I tell you to do, okay? Put your one hand in the centre of his chest. Yes, okay. yes. Right, now I need you to keep your arms straight and press down on his chest at least one third of its depth. Listen, very, very too much coming from mouth, something. What, what's coming from the mouth? Any, any, any flu. I don't uh, know what... All right, can you, can you wipe his mouth for me? Oh, for yeah. Yeah. Okay, you've wiped his mouth, okay. Is yeah. he moving at all? <laughs> No, nothing. Okay, okay. Right, okay. So what you need to do, place yourself vertically above his chest, okay? And make sure that your hands are in the centre of his chest. Okay. Okay, keeping your arms straight, you need to press down on his chest at least one third of its depth. Yeah, basically, okay. You need, you need to push down, okay? Yes. Do you understand? Yeah, no, Okay. Me. After each compression, you need to release the pressure, but keep your hands in position, okay? Yeah. Now, I need you to do this at a rate of one and two and three. That's one and two and three, okay? That's, that's yeah. Keep on doing that until help arrives, okay? Okay, please. Are you doing, no, listen, are you doing that for me now? Yes. Okay, keep, all right, keep going. Hello, and welcome to Crime Time UK. Today, we're going to discuss the case of the murder of four-year-old Daniel Pelka. Daniel was born on the 15th of July 2007 and died on the 3rd of March 2012. He had spent most of his life in Coventry and went to school in Falls Hill. At his school, lunchboxes had to be locked away because Daniel was stealing the food. Daniel had been eating food from the school bins and also muddy pancakes which had been tossed onto the floor. He had even tried to eat beans which had been planted into the soil for a school experiment. In March last year, Daniel's mother picked him up for what would be his final day at school. She emerges holding on to another child, but he was apparently ignored, left to scurry after his mother before they left the playground. At home he faced a number of punishments. He was imprisoned behind a door with no handles. Daniel was fed salt when he asked for a drink. Sometimes he was forced to defecate on his mattress because he wasn't allowed to go to the toilet. He was also submerged in a cold bath. Text messages between the couple provided damning evidence. His mother wrote, Daniel is crying because he wants to eat. Another text read, Well, now he's temporarily unconscious because I nearly drowned him. I won't be hitting him, but if I hear when, as he later wakes up, regains consciousness, then he's going back into the bathtub. I didn't let the water out. Neighbours in Coventry, some who didn't want to be identified, knew it was a troubled household. We just heard the scream. So You heard her scream? Yeah. In the house? Yeah, outside the house. Outside. Yeah. And then after that, she just quiet. That's all we know. And he was aggressive, yeah. This illustration shows the marks on Daniel's emaciated body. His mother said head injuries were inflicted by his stepfather, who attacked Daniel when he arrived home from school. A text the next day read, He'll get over it by tomorrow, 
there's no point to stress ourselves out and to call the ambulance because that will cause proper problems. During the 30-hour period in which Daniel lay dying after suffering a head injury, Magdalena and her partner chose not to call an ambulance, instead opting to carry on with their normal lives. After his death, it was found that Daniel weighed less than two stone. The pathologist who examined Daniel Pelka's emaciated body found more than 20 separate areas of injury, including a fatal swelling on the brain caused by a heavy blow. These images were shown to the jury. Other more graphic images taken by the hospital scanner were seen by the jurors, but were deemed too distressing to be released to the media. Two days after Daniel was murdered, both his mum and her partner was taken into custody on a suspicion of murder. During the nine-week trial, it was said the police, social services, school staff and the NHS workers missed countless opportunities to intervene and yet not one professional had faced disciplinary action. Daniel's factory worker stepfather is a wanted criminal in Poland who will be jailed if he'd ever returned back to Poland. His drug-taking mother is also thought to have been a prostitute in Poland. The court heard how Daniel was systematically starved, tortured and force-fed salt and locked in a homemade cell. He was so frightened of the stepfather who forced him to perform punishing exercises such as squat thrusts and he would wet himself if spoken to by an adult man. By the time Daniel had died a few months short of his fifth birthday, he weighed one stone and nine pounds, which is the same weight as an 18-month-old child. He also stood at three foot three inches tall, which is six inches smaller than the average his age. By the time Daniel's mum had staged the 999 call on March the 3rd, two days after the assault, he had already been dead for a few hours. When the couple's computer was examined, 55 internet searches including table saw overdose, when a child stops responding and patient in a coma had been made. Kreselek also admitted that he went online to check his bank account and the price of car tyres after the assault. A court has heard how a four-year-old boy was made to perform squats as a punishment for stealing food at school. Daniel Pelka died from a head injury in March last year. His mother, Magdalena Wuschak, and her partner, Marius Kresholek, both deny murder and causing or allowing the death of a child. Kresholek himself was giving evidence today at the trial at Birmingham Crown Court. Callum Watkinson sent this report. After several weeks of listening to prosecution testimony against him, Mariusz Krezelek, one of the two defendants in this murder trial, today left the dock and took to the witness box where he's been questioned for three and a half hours by his own defence barrister. This afternoon he told the jury about punishments meted out to four-year-old Daniel Pelka uh, for stealing food at school and for various other behaviours. He said that sometimes he made Daniel perform squats for up to ten minutes at, at a time. Sometimes he made him run around the living room and sometimes he made him kneel for up to 20 minutes at a time. All of this, he said, was done at Magdalena Wuchak's instigation. He told the court that Magdalena had told him Daniel should feel a man's hand and it was a man who should be doing the punishing. Did he feel your hand, he was asked. On his hand, yes, he said, but he said he never hit Daniel on the head. He was also asked about the small room in the house where Daniel Pelka is reported to have slept. He said that initially Daniel slept with his sibling, but that that had changed when Magdalena Wuchak caught the four-year-old wandering around the house at 2 a.m. At that point, he said, she told me to make Daniel a room in the little room, this is a room at the front of the house, and to do it in such a way that Daniel would not be able to leave it at night. And the jury was then shown photos from the inside of that room of the door handle that had been adapted so it couldn't be opened from the inside. He wasn't asked a great deal about his own relationship with Daniel Pelka, who he described as an average child and a cheeky boy, but he was completely normal, he said. He was asked if Daniel would ever engage with other children. Not quite, he said. When we went to parks, as we did often, Daniel would usually stay aside. He simply enjoyed playing on his own. Mariusz Krezelek will give further evidence tomorrow. When Krezelek was in court, he was questioned by Mr Hankin. He was asked... When was the last time that you tucked him into bed? Kreslik replied, I cannot remember. He then asked, when's the last time you read him a bedtime story? Again, Kreslik said, I can't remember. Mr. Hankin asked him, when did you last bathe him? Kreslik replied, 
I cannot remember. And Mr. Hankin said, When was the last time you played with him? Kreslick said, I cannot remember. So then Mr. Hankin said, So this little boy has been in your life for two years and you can't remember when you last tucked him in, read him a story, bathed him or even played with him. You didn't have his best interests at heart, did you? And Kreslick replied, I think you're right. Not because I didn't want to, but because my head was occupied with something else. Some of the jurors just shook their head in shame. On the 2nd of August 2013, both his mother and her partner were jailed for a minimum of 30 years each. Although the pair were both sentenced to 30 years each, unfortunately the story just doesn't end there. On the 14th of July 2015, two years into her life sentence, Daniel's mum committed suicide. Now unfortunately I think this is the easy way out and I feel that she just didn't get punished. Two years for what she did, it just isn't enough. Then six months later, on Wednesday the 28th of January 2016, Kreslek was found dead in his cell where he had died from a heart attack. Now this is such a harrowing case and it's absolutely disgusting the way that Daniel Pelkov is treated and hopefully is in a much better place. I'm glad what came to the mother and her boyfriend and hopefully they suffered every last minute before they died. Rest in peace Daniel.